Routing is at the core of every data network, moving information across an internetwork from source to destination. Routers are the device responsible for the transfer of packets from one network to the next. As we learned in the previous chapter, routers learn about remote networks either dynamically using routing protocols or manually using static routes. In many cases, routers use a combination of both dynamic routing protocols and static routes. This chapter focuses on static routing. Static routes are very common and do not require the same amount of processing and overhead as we will see with dynamic routing protocols. In this chapter, we would follow a sample topology as we configure static routes and learn troubleshooting techniques in the process we would examine several key internet working operating system commands and the result they display. We will also introduce a routing table using both directly connected networks and static routes. As you work through the packet trace activities associated with these commands, take the time to experiment with the commands and examine the results. Reading the routing tables will soon become second nature. In this chapter, we will learn, define the general role a router plays in the network, describe the directly connected networks and the different routes interfaces, examine directly connected networks in the routing table and use the CDP protocol, describe static routes with exit interfaces, Describe summary and default route, examine how packets get forward when using static routes, and identify how to manage and troubleshoot static routes. The Role of a Router The router is a special purpose computer that plays a key role in the operation of any data network. Routers are primarily responsible for interconnecting networks by determining the best path to send packets, forwarding packets towards their destination. Routers perform packet forwarding by learning about remote networks and maintaining routing information. The router is a junction or intersection that connects multiple IP networks. The router's primary forwarding decision is based on layer 3 information, the destination IP address. The router's routing table is used to find the best match between the destination IP of a packet and a network address in the routing table. The routing table will ultimately determine the exit interface to forward the packets, and the router will encapsulate that packet in the appropriate data link frame for that outgoing interface. The figure shows the topology used in this chapter. The topology consists of three routers, labeled R1, R2, and R3. Router R1 and R2 are connected through other WANG links, and routers R2 and R3 are connected through another WANG link. Each router is connected to a different Ethernet LAN, represented by a switch and a PC. Each router in this example is Cisco 1841. A Cisco 1841 router has the following interfaces. Two Fast Ethernet interfaces, Fast Ethernet 00 and Fast Ethernet 01. Two Serial interfaces, Serial 000 and Serial 001. The interfaces on your router may vary from those on the 1841, but you should be able to follow the commands in this chapter with some slight modification and complete the hands-on lab. Examining the connections of the router. Connecting a router to a network requires a router interface connected to be coupled with a cable connector. As you can see in figure, Cisco routers support many different connection types or connector types. Serial connectors. Click in figure. 1. For WAN connections, Cisco routers support the EIA TIA232 and EIA TIA449, V.35X.21 and EIA TIA530 standards for serial connectors, as shown. Memorizing these connection types is not important. Just know that a router has a DB6 port that can support five different cabling standards. Because five different cabling standards are supported with this port, the port is sometimes called a 5-in-1 serial port. The other end of the serial cable is fitted with a connector that is appropriate to one of the five possible standards. Note the documentation for the device to which you want to connect should indicate the standard for that device. Figures 2 and 3, network routers support the smart serial interface that allows for more data to be forwarded. The serial end of the smart serial cable is a 26-pin connector. It is much smaller than the DB6 connector used to connect to a 5-in-1 serial port. 
These transition cables support the same 5 serial standards are available in either the DTE or the DCE configuration. For a thorough explanation of the DTE and the DCE, see Labs 1.51, Cable in a Network and Basic Router Configuration. These cable designations are only important to when configuring your lab. Equipment to simulate a read wall environment. In a production setting, the cable type is determined by you by the WANG services you are using. Let's click Figure 4. A different connector is used in an Ethernet LAN based environment. An RJ45 connector for the unshielded twisted pair cable is the most common connector used to connect LAN interfaces. At each end of the RJ45 cable, you should be able to see eight color strips or pins. An Ethernet cable uses pins 1, 2, 3, and 6 for transmitting and receiving data. Two types of cables can be used in Ethernet LAN interfaces, a straight-through or a patch cable with the order of the color pins the same on each end of the cable, a crossover cable with pin 1 connected to pin 3 and pin 2 connected to pin 6. Straight-through cables are used for switch to router, switch to PC, hub to PC, hub to server. Crossover cables are used for switch to switch, PC to PC, switch to hub, hub to hub, router to router, router to silver.